Everybody knows that cooking a piece of meat is like wringing a wet sponge. Heat pushes out moisture. What is less known is that the same process, to an extent, works in reverse. Meat sucks up moisture as it cools. This is one of the many reasons why I usually don't season or flavor my steak. I flavor my cutting board. I put nothing but oil on the steak before it goes in the pan. You could put some salt and pepper on it before cooking if you want, but I like my pepper raw, and the idea that salting meat immediately before cooking will enhance browning is, as far as I can tell, a myth. If you want to salt in advance, do it at least 40 minutes in advance, per Kenji's authoritative article on the subject linked in the description. What I'm doing here is a classic technique called dressing the board, and one of the reasons I love it is that I can do all of this prep while the steak is already cooking. Just chopping up some rosemary from my yard, rosemary and steak are mmm, chef kiss. Now I'm just finely grating a small clove of garlic with my microplane. This is gonna be virtually raw, so be very careful with how much you use. I like garlic, and I like a little citrus on my steak. Not everybody does, just a little bit for me. I use lemon, sometimes I use lime, sometimes even grapefruit. And I like a ton of coarsely ground pepper. I like it raw because it tends to burn on the steak, and because cooking pepper takes away a lot of its pungency. That's why people in fancy restaurants offer you some at the table. Just a few grains of salt go on the board. I'll tell you why so few in a minute. I'll flip my steak. That's a strip steak, by the way. Brits would call it a sirloin. A couple little slivers of butter go on the board. You could throw that butter in the pan for the last minute of cooking if you like it brown. I like how the milky taste of fresh butter contrasts with the deep, dark flavor of the steak. And I am not alone. Tons of classic American steakhouses finish with fresh butter. I cooked this steak for nine minutes total and rested it for five. Including the minute in which I preheated my pan, that is literally 15 minutes from start to dinner. Because again, with this method, you can prep all of your flavorings for the meat while it's cooking instead of before. Steak goes on top of all that stuff. Its heat will soften the rosemary and melt the butter and take the edge off of the raw garlic as it all just sits there and rests. All right, look at that juice coming out. That's like the water we squeezed out of the sponge. And normally it would be lost in the ether, but we're going to reclaim it. I'll cut my steak into thin slices, and because I'm lazy, I'll cut the slices in half so everything is bite-sized now. And then here's the big moment. We'll just toss the pieces in our pool of flavor-augmented beef juice. This is when the sponge starts to reabsorb and it'll absorb even more if you let it rest a second time in a big heap like this to keep it warm. That said, with all of this slicing and resting, the meat will go cold the instant you put it on a cold plate, so I either eat it straight off the board, or I warm my plate. Here is one way to warm a plate. Run it under hot water for a minute, both sides. It'll be easy to dry off because hot water evaporates. A hot plate can actually reheat a well-rested piece of meat, which is one of many reasons why steakhouses generally heat their plates. Now look at how little juice is left for me to scrape off of that board. The meat has sucked in the rest. Hey, fun fact, even perfectly pink steak will look gray or brown in natural sunlight. That's why steakhouses don't have windows. I should have shot this video at night. And this is why I only put a little salt on the cutting board to get evenly distributed through the steak. I like for most of my salt to be in the form of a super coarse finishing salt. Think of it like a pretzel. You could just mix the salt into your dough before you bake the pretzel and it would be uniformly salty, but it's much more interesting and delicious to have your salt concentrated in big crunchy crystals on top. Top. Little sparks of salt instead of blanket low-level saltiness. So there is the method. If you try it, get creative. Any flavors at all can go on that cutting board, as can any tender cut of meat for that matter. Even if you add no flavoring at all, just tossing the meat in its own juices can be a great thing to do because... 